What's up everyone and welcome back to Top 5 Central. Today we're looking at the top 5 cops who got caught breaking the law. With that said, if you hate people who abuse their power like cops or maybe even teachers, leave a like on the video right now. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification so you never miss another upload. But anyways, without the way, let's get right into it. Number 5. Okay, so this is a super complicated story and people still aren't exactly sure what happened so I'm gonna break it down for you as simply as I can. Basically, this cop was on a drug bus that led to a 27-year-old man getting arrested when heroin gel capsules were found in his garden, but new evidence means it might not actually be that simple. Basically, the cop had his body camera on and it showed him finding a bag full of white pills in a soup can in the garden, but the funny thing about body cams is that they film for 30 seconds before they're turned on. And well, yeah, it's that 30 seconds that really does make the difference because it shows a cop planting the drugs in the garden and then turning around and discovering them all over again. Even worse, the official excuse is they didn't have their cameras on when they found the drugs the first time, so they had to recreate what happened, but to be honest, it's way more likely that the drugs were planted. Regardless, if that's true, then this is a major crime the cop committed, but thankfully it looks like the case will be sorted out pretty soon. I'm gonna check here. Hold on. Yo. Hold up. Number four. Okay, nobody likes their stuff being messed with, but it's pretty obvious that even if you're a cop, you don't respond by putting someone in a chokehold. So to kind of give the quick backstory, this police officer discovered that his van was being repossessed, but instead of just accepting it or trying to talk to the man about what was going on, he thought that stopping him by putting an arm around his neck was the best way to go. Like I'm not even joking, he kept him in a chokehold for 8 whole minutes and his excuse is that the man shoved him, but his wife filmed the whole thing and it's pretty obvious that's not true. Just wait though, because this is when the story gets funny and you literally won't believe what happens. At this point in the video, a bunch of other cops show up to rescue the repo man and the first cop isn't happy about it at all. Like he flat out refuses to be handcuffed and tells him to arrest the repo man instead, and then finally he tries to run away when he figures out that isn't going to happen. Don't worry though, because he does eventually get what he deserves, and for a pretty ridiculous reason too. Basically the dude trips over his feet and falls while trying to run away, and that's how he gets arrested in the end. How did a state cop find himself on the wrong end of a taser? It all started with a repo gone wrong outside a Los Lunas apartment complex. Charles, let him go, Charles! Charles, let him go! The man in the chokehold was trying to repossess state cop Charles Vernier's Nissan Xterra. The six foot five Vernier claims the repo man shoved him. The repo man says he didn't. But cell video from the man's wife is indisputable. Charles, let him go! I'm not taking my vehicle today. The chokehold lasts at least eight minutes and gets pretty strong at points. Yes, I'm restraining you because yeah. you assaulted me. And I am going to continue and to I'm, I'm a here. But when Los Lunas police show up, it's Vernier who's in trouble. Step around the vehicle now. Handcuff him. Step around the Handcuff vehicle now. now. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. The state cop finally starts to listen, and then... Put your hands on your head. No, I'm not being handcuffed today. Yes, you are. Turn around. He bolts before tripping over his own feet. Number three. So going to court is supposed to be about fairness and justice, but what if they don't have the full story? I mean, if it wasn't for these cops being found out as liars, the man on trial's life could have worked out very differently, both because of the jail time and afterwards. Anyways, the quick version of the story is this man was on trial for trying to escape the cops, resisting arrest, and assaulting police officers, and the video the cops had backed some of that up. With that said, another cop car pulled up and filmed the whole thing from the opposite angle, and from there things looked a lot different. For a start, another cop car crashed into his car, throwing broken glass all over his face, and he keeps his hands up the whole time. The video then also showed the cops punching him over and over again for no reason, as well as proving he never tried to steal their guns. Now the cops said they never did anything wrong, but as soon as the court saw the video, they released the guy without any charges, which is really good. With that said, I'm glad there was a happy ending, but it's kind of scary to think about how different it would be if the attorney hadn't believed the guy's version of events and gone looking for the evidence. 
This is the Bloomfield Police Department's dash cam video that prosecutors say they never saw when they pursued criminal charges against 30-year-old Marcus Jeter. Notice his hands in the air. He was charged with eluding police, resisting arrest and assault, and also notice who throws repeated punches. If the tape hadn't surfaced, I was going to be doing jail. Writing that tape. If we hadn't had the tapes in this particular case, an innocent man would be in jail today. I'm sure that if this happened to me, it could happen to a bunch of other people, you know? Scary, right? It's a scary situation. And we were there exclusively today in Essex County Court in Newark, where Bloomfield Police Officers Sean Corder, there on the left, and Orlando Trinidad, who you will see here on the right, were arraigned on charges including conspiracy, official misconduct, and falsifying reports. Number two. Now this is one of those times where both people are kind of in the wrong, so it's up to you to decide whether or not the cops did the right thing. Basically, this cop was flying down a 60 mile an hour road doing 85, which is totally illegal, right? Like they had no lights or sirens on, so it didn't look like they were chasing anybody down, and the cop was in plain clothes too, so he probably might not have been on duty. Anyways, I think this has all happened to us at least once, which is fine, but this next part is where things get messy, because another driver decided to film the cop going that fast and then overtook him. Obviously, that meant the guy filming was speeding too, and he got pulled over for it pretty quick, which is kind of ironic when you think about it. Anyways, clearly the guy flipped out because the cop was acting really hypocritically, and after a huge fight, another officer had to come over and cool things down. Being totally honest, it's hard to tell who's even in the right in this situation, because the back and forth arguing goes on for so long, but to kind of give it a conclusion, I think both parties probably just shouldn't have been speeding. Over. Uh, you are traveling at 79 miles an hour behind me there. Sir, you were doing 85 miles an hour when you passed me, and uh, apparently that's against the law too. So where do you get off pulling me over for speeding when you flew past a bunch of traffic in 60 miles an hour, I'm no lights, over, no I'm lights, no siren. Up in front of me. Listen, okay. that's <laughs> bullshit. No, listen, and that's bullshit. You put lives in danger when you do that. Is it okay for you guys to speed like that? Is it okay to blow by traffic in 60 miles an hour, no lights, no siren? And you can pull me over for speeding? If you're speeding, yeah. We can okay, but speed. you aren't allowed to speed either. And I know you weren't driving, but you need to correct him. Okay, you guys enforce laws. When he speeds, you go, hey, slow down, pal. We're speeding. Number one. So using undercover informants to scope out suspicious places is nothing new, but this video shows sometimes it could go seriously wrong. The problem is sometimes undercover agents are working to get benefits like their sentences reduced, and that makes them pretty determined to find things that lead to arrest. This time, the guy was so motivated to uncover a crime that he literally faked one just to make it look like he was doing well at his job. So it turns out the guy in question was running a legitimate business that sold drug related things but no actual drugs. Instead of just admitting that, the agent walked in and literally just placed some crack cocaine on the counter before pretending to find it there and taking photos. It's, well, kind of dumb because there were seven cameras in the store and all of them caught him doing it, so his crime was figured out pretty quick. In the end, the store owner walked free, but the same can't be said of the agent, which just shows that crime really doesn't pay. Scotia and Schenectady County police became suspicious and targeted Andrew's shop, sending an undercover informant in twice in March. The second time, Andrew's attorney, Kevin Rebrand, does play-by-play -play that appears to show the informant planting, then photographing crack cocaine that led to Andrew's arrest. Donald turns, he comes in, places the crack on the counter, crack which under federal sentencing guidelines would get him four years in jail under New York, New York state law would get him two to seven years in jail. Now, neither the Schenectady County Sheriff nor the Scotia Village Police Chief were available to be interviewed about the apparent planting of evidence. By phone, the sheriff acknowledged proper procedures were not followed, but denied his investigators purposely framed the suspect. The sheriff blamed the informant who has taken flight. Andrews was arrested but released when he was able to get police to look at the multiple camera angles. And there's our video on the top five cops caught breaking the law. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like down below and subscribe so you see whenever I upload a video. Also, if you have your own top five or top 10 idea, feel free to use your extremely handy form in the description to submit it. With that said, thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.